Furia discovering a very big brain play that they're going to be utilizing in ALGS and BLGS. And speaking of BLGS, we've got some news on that starting tomorrow and some concerns being addressed by Minus Tempo. Also, we've got some scrim results that are in and how these teams are currently doing. And unfortunately, a little bit of an update to this Furia situation as far as the organization goes and some of the layoffs that have been going on. Who's going to be affected in all of this? Of course, a lot to dive into and discuss. Let's get into it. First off, a couple of days ago, Octane Collegiate for Apex Legends College Esports basically came out to say they are no longer just non-affiliated with uh, Apex or EA Respawn. They are now a licensed partner, officially licensed with EA. So College Apex is here to stay. We saw this a couple of days ago. That was great news. Then you move on. You're starting to see some uh, results out of that, and that's good news. Byron for uh, Native comes out to say, and it's the vice president over there, college Apex players, hit my line, need some uh, challenger circuit experience, priority to those that have you know finals, POQs, and pro league experience as well, but I got an opportunity for you. There's more than just Native, by the way. I've been seeing so many people with college connections and uh you know this stuff gets, gets very serious I, I knew some people that did rocket league that got like full scholarships and such uh to college because of esports so i love where we're going with this i'm glad that apex uh, uh collegiate esports is being taken more serious uh and i'm excited to see where all of this stuff does go just wanted to give you that little update that it's getting serious and for those of you out there that have experience i know a lot of you guys watch our, our challenger circuit fanatics uh, go at it you know go ahead and get your bag it's time for you to get a step up into this scene as well also wanted to mention oversight esports blgs scrims let's talk about the results let's talk about some issues going on in uh this uh blgs stuff as well so furia first place i mean do i really need to say it i've been kind of riding this furia hype train for the last couple of weeks I think Furia is one of the best E-District teams. I think they're one of the best teams overall right now. And it seems like we're getting, uh, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you'll remember about four months ago or so, five months, give or take, there was this uh, wave in scrims before Furia was even, uh, you know, this roster, right? Back when uh, they were still almost there already. Yeah, almost there when they were still as almost there before they got signed to Furia, if you guys remember, they were winning everything i mean it was every day in scrims they were first place second place first place over and over and over i mean that team was the most consistent scrim team i probably have ever witnessed and we're seeing that furia again by the way i told you guys they go in these waves sometimes they're there sometimes they're not furia right there or right now is there and so i'm excited to see if we continue to get this furia right i've also kind of been a critic of them because they do play good in these moments but they also have moments where they'll just bottom out and you know as consistent as furia has been they are the one team that will somehow get like third rounded or something in this blg <laughs> blg has tomorrow i don't know how to explain it but that's just the way furia has been so hopefully furia keeps it going they still they consistent they keep it well and i'm hoping that we get the best side of furia i do think that their ceilings are, are, are just higher than most of these other teams out there but it's just that we don't always get that ceiling okay also not only furia in first place moist esports in second falcons in third and of course falcons have been playing with their new third or sub i should say a civian so interested to see uh how that you know plays into blgs this weekend tripods in fourth virtue bleed esports uh lg durag thuggets busters tsm nrg liquid alienware broskies complexity dojo uh purple slushy yup oblivion and free agents you can also take a look at the breakdown sheet here that is provided by oversight esports and uh basically dojo playing with rambo right now obviously you guys know that jen burton is not going to be able to participate with the visa issues going on same thing with the falcons esport roster is there uh, as well as they're going through the same thing with zero so unfortunate stuff obviously uh interested to also see how moist does i think moist is probably one of the better uh on paper rosters right now but uh you know will they live up to this super team hype right that they kind of were with ssg uh, i think mt is obviously a very good leader for this team i'm excited to see how this team does but uh, nonetheless that is what's going on and, and complexity as well complexity is another team I, I think enemy is a very great addition you've been seeing complexity over the last couple of events right they, they're that team that no one's really counting in but yet they consistently qualify to the next round so 
interested to see how that one goes but furia 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 we were watching obviously nice week watch party and there was a crazy play that you know fury this is why furia is, is is next level they're doing some big brain stuff that not many teams are doing i mean this guy keon and vax are they're both on one right now to pull off this big brain of a strat getting all purple shields by using a method you probably haven't even thought of. Roll the clip. I can't tell if Furia wants like teams to push over. That's why Keon keeps dying. He just wants to get... I'm I'm curious what he's doing right now. He can get knocked from staring at that guy. That guy will start shooting Keon. Are they trying to farm the Evos up by him getting instant knocked? Two second timer though. Trying to get the purple armors? Yeah, but we're 600 off. And I haven't even started yet. Bro, they are 600 off. You don't have to. You don't have to. If I just keep getting knocked, then you, you can keep hey, your time. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Dude. He has to get knocked six more times. No. Yeah, six more times now. Let's freaking Let's go! And they're now triple purple armor, man. As NRG is now fighting the building in front. Yeah. NRG just literally front, gave right them spot. purple armor, baby. We love to see that. To That's competitive Apex at its finest, baby. Literally comp Apex at its finest. So obviously some interesting stuff there from, uh, you know, Vaxlon and Kia Furia all in general, but that's not all good news coming from the Furia camp. Unfortunately, we did get some bad news, at least from the organization side of things, right? You heard just a couple of weeks ago is what or keon talking about his watson basically saying and confirming that there were things going on in furia keon basically saying it sounded like everyone from the north american side was going to be parted uh, a ways with and sadly that's just you know that's not the news we want to hear especially after you see all these teams come in for world cup and you're like yay apex is growing again then you see player counts go down all the orgs left after world cup and uh, now you're seeing some orgs that have been around before world cup also maybe leaving and so will furia be one of those or you know are they just holding out till champs and then they're going to leave after champs obviously that's what we're waiting to find out sadly this may sound like not a big deal but if you know chase in the community social media manager for furia he's the one that makes all the good tweets i mean this guy has got some humor to him he has done such a great job with the furia fan base for apex and getting people behind it uh, i mean honestly if you see the interactions he has with his watson you'll understand why people love the org of furia so much and it was because of this guy chase has done such a good job with the social media team there it's sad to say that he has been laid off with the furia layoffs that were taking place last week and he was there with three years so this sucks because you may not see this as a big deal like i said but furia having a good social media presence in the apex scene is important and it is a big deal if we're going to continue to grow this esport so not sure obviously where their full future plans are but sadly chase will be parting ways and that is a, a lack of social media coverage that furia will now be having inside of the uh lgs or apex legends esports scene now speaking of blgs minus tempo put out some very good concerns about this blgs and i have not seen it addressed yet uh, i'll take a look once again at nice week stuff but i just haven't seen them talk about it 758 teams have signed up for blgs america's week one sounds good right only problem the rule book says 640 teams is the maximum for each region Will it be first come first serve on who checks in first for the tournament? This could be problematic, especially when you got pros that are all equal. And if you've got Imperial Howe missing the tournament because he didn't check in in time, although he signed up way ahead of time, this could be an issue. This could be a big issue. And hopefully they will get this stuff figured out. But it, you know, as you look at the bracket stuff that Minus Tempo lays out, this is only going to work really with a 640 team maximum like they had, right? because the top 10 for each lobby go into the next round that's 320 because that's half and they play four games and the top 10 goes to 160 then to 80 then to 80 to 40 then 40 to 20 that's how you get your final so they're really banking on 640 being the maximum teams uh, uh limit that actually takes place if not you may have another round in there where things get complicated and confusing apparently some have heard that it's not about how many sign up it's how many check in the day of the tourney I do think that's okay like i get it 758 teams i know that there are always a ton of teams that miss signups and don't actually sign up or some crazy stuff don't accept the rules itself 
but uh, I also think that you got to worry about things like Allison saying, uh, you know, closeted cheaters may be a big problem. There's so many people that are looking to get their moment. There's so many people that know Apex's uh, anti-cheat is not good. How problematic will this tournament be? I'm hoping not. I want the best for, for Wig and Greek. Those guys have uh, obviously done a lot for the community. I think this event is so good for us to have. It gives us something to watch over the weekend and during this off season for ALGS. I don't want it to become a problem. I'm just saying that there are concerns that maybe it does. And so let's just hope, get all the bad juju away from us, get the cheaters away. Hopefully hideouts in the team are hardcore locked on banning people live if they are cheating, but you best believe we're gonna get some. And by the way, it's not just BLGS. Everyone's prone to it. They're all getting it, right? You know, even ALGS Challenger Circuit got cheaters all the time. So if that does happen, don't start thinking that, oh my gosh, here we go. This is what you get when you run a subpar event, the ALGS. No, that was happening with ALGS too. Just know it's the game. It's Apex right now, really. Now, shout out to my boy, Waki, for saving me on this one because this one, I was literally laying in bed and he gave me some further context on this. But it seems like they may be looking to do a seven round tournament due to how much volume there actually was on the signups and in the algs discord they just added 32 more groups in preparation for blgs so doubling the size of the tournament now of course you're not going to necessarily have a full lobby in all of these and so you may have some instances like you may remember from challenger circuit where there's 11 teams or 12 teams in a group and top 10 advances so it's like the first round is a freebie and so it kind of sucks right those those suck because it's nice you feel good like oh we made it to the next round but it really just makes your day longer over a, a match that really shouldn't have even happened but uh, you can take a look at this and see these groups so many more have just been added it doesn't cut off at 32 anymore it goes all the way back down to 64 uh, so gonna be in they're gonna be crazy to see and obviously this could be a very very long day but shout out to Waki for helping me with that one anyways the BLGS qualifier schedule is as follows starting tomorrow October 19th you'll get check-ins you'll get the game to start as well at 3 p.m eastern check-ins by the way an hour beforehand so if you are playing make sure you are ready because who knows how many teams will actually check in considering we have had a lot register BLGS qualifier number two is going to be the following week that's October 26th Registration for that has already started as well. You won't be able to register for the qualifier three until October the 28th, and that'll be on November 23rd. And then you won't be able to register for the number four one after uh, until November 11th. And then that one will start on December 7th. So a lot more to come. We've got four more tournaments. We're just starting it off with the first one. Uh, EMEA, obviously looking to gear up APAC North and APAC South looking to gear up very, very soon. Uh, some of these are a week behind. So interested to see how all these orgs and, and regions do. Will you get an upset? I believe so. I don't know who it's gonna be, but some of these orgs are going to drop the ball. I'm telling you, it, it may be, what if it's NIP? Or what if it's Aurora? What if it's a uh, Falcons East? I doubt it'd be Falcons, but I mean, we talk about it. There's so many pro teams out there and there's so many pro players out there. Someone in all of these regions is going to get upset and you're going to see some Randy team that no one's ever heard of pass someone, get semis, get finals, whatever. And one of these big pro orcs that have made it to land or playing at champs or something will be left out. I guarantee you someone in some region it'll happen to anyways let's talk about emea uh just recent scrim results once again obviously we've been following this uh the last couple of days or so but nip in first we saw that two days ago you no know, congrats to nip very good uh scrim team as of late then you've got full english in second you've got vcgo in third 3d max pua in fifth once again i think they had fifth yesterday sgp2 as well forbidden aurora all stay in top 10 navi in the top 10 as well We've been seeing some back and forth days from gaming gladiators you know it's one of those things where i guess right now not sure what version of them you will get will they have a different version of them when it comes game time tournament time we're seeing a much better side of gaming gladiators though when it comes to uh, important moments right scrims are one thing but there's a whole nother side of things when you actually see uh, a tournament being involved then you've got phase in 16th phase has just not really been their best as of late and i'm kind of uh it, it's a little disappointing it sucks uh but i also want to make mention alliance down here at the bottom in 19th not really much to grab there they weren't in game eight they weren't in game seven this is the same story we saw with phase yesterday weren't in game five or six 
uh and i think they were only in the first four games or so so interested to see what your thoughts are down in the comment section below about all the topics mentioned in today's video right a lot to discuss with blgs starting tomorrow if you guys want to stay up to date then make sure to like and subscribe stay up to date right here on the channel for all things apex esports and until the next time we'll see you all later gators